You're watching The Breakfast Club. <laughs> Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We have a special guest in the building. And he's clearly high. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Malco. Good morning, uh, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Came good to be here. freestyling. <laughs> Same with the rap. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm playing. Uh, no, he's not. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that well, old you want Jackson. Rap. <laughs> no. Good morning, man. Good, Good morning, to see y'all. Yeah. How are you, sir? I'm decent. I'm decent. I'm tired, but I'm excited. I'm really excited about it. What you talking about? You having sex all night? You know, I wish. Actually, I was, I've was. i been traveling from the East Coast to the West Coast back and forth to do press. Okay. And mm-hmm. I came from Puerto Rico. So I haven't really, honestly speaking, when I left about, I left about seven, eight months ago to start filming Mad Dogs, I have not stopped because immediately after Mad Dogs, I went into filming Will Packer's um, Myers, Myers like Christmas. Three. <laughs> Everybody keeps asking about that. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's only because he said it for a minute, I was like, for real? Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> now, what is Mad Dog about if somebody haven't seen it? Uh, Mad Dog. Uh, word. Um, first of all, it, it, it's it's me, Ben Chaplin, Mike Imperioli from Sopranos, mm-hmm. uh, Steve, uh, Steve Zahn from Everything. <laughs> created by uh, Sean Ryan, who created The Shield. Um, Billy Zane is in it. It's about these four guys who um, went to college together, and they go to visit their one really rich friend in Belize, who's the only one of them who who's made it. Oh, so y'all filming Belize? Uh, uh, well, we actually substituted Puerto, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico for Belize. Belize. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> make it seem like Belize. Exactly. Oh, Thanks for so ruining the, that magic. <laughs> I'm about to say, y'all filming Belize. I know one of y'all caught a curable FTD out there. Oh, man, a curable. Yes. Thank God. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> no, because... Yeah, Belize is all right. But go ahead, y'all, y'all and go yeah. visit him in Belize. So we go visit him in Belize, and we start, like, we, it don't seem like his his success is on the up and up. Mm-hmm. And the next thing you know, we witness and are framed for his murder mm. and end up running for our lives. Mm. Now, I remember when you first started filming this, it was actually like a pilot for Amazon. That's and right. then it was a series on Amazon. Yeah. And so it's gotten picked up? Yeah, so the way that Amazon did it was you film, you know, you film that first episode, and then you let the people vote on it. Got you. You know, and people voted really well on it. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, okay, let's go back and make the whole, let's go back and make the whole thing. And it's a total of 10 episodes. You get to binge watch it. Comes out on Friday, January 22nd. And that's a way, that's a strange way to do a pilot. <laughs> like it, do a pilot. Hey, y'all vote if y'all like it. We bring it back. It's I mean, I, it, 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 it is, but it's kind of dope because <laughs> we, we are in an era right now where it's not about what the networks want you to watch and when they want you to watch it. It's about what you want to watch right. and when you want to watch it. So, hey, why not have some say in it, you know? And, I haven't jumped on the Amazon train yet. I'm a, I'm a Netflix guy. Yeah. Yep. You know, I, I had been and then... Um, you got a show. And then I actually, exactly, I got cast for that pilot. I was like, let me check out what, before I go in there and start, you know, let me check them out. And I was like, oh, shoot, they're really trying to do stuff. Got you. So, so what's your character in Mad Dogs? Explain that. I play Gus. He's a uh, he's divorced, two kids. One, one one of his daughters is, is, is on her way to an Ivy League school. And, you know, um, he was a pretty successful attorney. And the firm got shut down because of some fraudulent activity, which is really unclear as to what his involvement was. And, you know, he wants to believe that he's operating from this moral compass where he's, you know, a man with, of integrity. But when it comes to family and doing what he has to do for survival, he'll do some ruthless things. And this is, a, this is an environment that, you know, exposes that. Now, why do you have two phones? You know, only drug dealers and hoes have two <laughs> And phones. then he covered both yeah, screens. Well, you <laughs> have two phones, Romney. Okay. What, are you, what are you running from? Um, no, you know what? One phone is mine. Okay. And one phone belongs to Tijuana Jackson. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, for real. Oh, lie, Wait, yo, let me guess which one is Tijuana's. Yo, people, yo, if you out there and you got Tijuana Jackson's phone number, call him right now this so we right can show them what they're talking about. You lie. Yeah. What's big Tijuana's one? number then? His number is, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a Cal, it's a it's a Florida number. It's <laughs> seven, <laughs> five, damn it, what is TJ's number? Um, TJ has a everybody? number. Um, no, everybody got it. No, okay. I'm not giving out to everybody. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> I give it out to TJ subscribers and TJ supporters only. So how does that work? What do they go to YouTube? and? Yeah, like everybody, you find him on YouTube. He gives his number out on YouTube. And he kids, gives great and, advice. And, and, exactly. And you call TJ and TJ will take a minute with you. I thought Tijuana was a girl. No, T wanted to T. Okay, let me break down. TJ, no ex convict right turned now. motivational speaker, right? Got you, got you, got you. He's a dude that went to prison and decided when he got out of prison, he's going to be a life coach. Got you. There's going to be a movie. She's going to be in it for sure. Yeah, yeah. I guarantee you. Are you going to fund well, it yourself? Huh? You going to fund it yourself? You know what? I started to fund it myself, and then I just recently ran into funding. My goal was to fund it myself, and about right, right as we started filming Mad Dogs, we mm-hmm. got a company that was willing to fund it for How us. How do you run in the funding? Well, my management <laughs> was my management was was actively pursuing someone to finance the movie, gotcha. and I'm business partner with the guy who finances movies. And 
real talk, the only way that I could get the movie financed was to cast certain people in it. So I've reached out to people that I've been working with throughout all the think, you know, think like a man films and all of the movies I've done, and even Mad Dogs. And now I've got a cast that was worth money. Got you. Yeah. What kind the, of budget you got? I don't want to do nothing ever for more than two point five million dollars. I am in the I'm in the mindset of mm-hmm. first of all, a lot of people don't notice, but you spend on average anywhere between like six and fifty million dollars on P and A, the P and A budget, and that's because P and A print and advertising. Okay, right? You know what I was thinking. I know what uh, you yeah, thinking. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly, which is which is all right. <laughs> there ain't there, there's a new term for that now, but um, <laughs> but yeah, man. And I was like, and and so the, the goal in the game now is is to keep those costs minimal and share the ownership with the artist. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we because mm-hmm. a, a lot of people are coming in this game, not making no money. So I'm like, keep that overhead. Get rid of that P and A budget. Distribution now says you can because you can distribute digitally, and so that's the you know that's the game that I'm trying to get into is where you are. For lack of a better description, you're just cutting out traditional distribution because as a black man, if I'm a black man who's a lead in the film, you know what they tell me? My film is only going to, they're going to tell me, a Trinidadian man with a Venezuelan, a Trinidadian and Venezuelan father, mm-hmm. they're going to tell me that I can only be distributed just domestically to urban America. That's why mm-hmm. Kevin Hart, when he was here, said he only does movies that will be distributed internationally. internationally. Exactly. Yeah. I don't blame him. His his hustle is just on some other. Crazy, oh, no, yeah. Kevin's I've never seen nothing like that. If anybody comes along and does what Kevin does, they'll. Alien. Now let me ask you this: We've been talking a lot about the Oscars, obviously, with Chris Rock hosting, yeah. and Jada Pickett Smith said she's not going. Right, right. Spike Lee is boycotting. They're asking people to boycott the Oscars. What's your take on all of that? Are you going? Um, no, no. Look, dude, I'm gonna be real. I've never. It's just never really been my thing. Mm-hmm. I've Have never you ever been invited. Um, I think I, I was invited back when I was invited back when I was doing like weeds and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't think I've ever been invited to the Oscars. Mm. But it's just so you not. You don't have a say in this. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. You. No. Two oh, degrees, no, right? No. But do you say because I always right. feel like for an actor, are you like okay, my goal is to one day Never. be nominated for an Oscar? Does that matter to you? Never. Mm-hmm. Never. All I've ever wanted to be was Charlamagne. That was. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, baby. Y'all That's look terrible like that. goal. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the same way. I don't need nobody's validation. Me neither. I've never. I swear to God. Even when I was a kid, and people were talking about, you know, uh, people, you know. Whatever the hell was mainstream at the time, I was always talking about the more alternative thing anyway. And so as long as I've looked at the Oscars, it really never had nothing to do with me. It never really reflected anything of me. I don't even, I honest to God, don't know the one time I've actually sat and watched the Oscars. Mm-hmm. Right. I can't think of one time. I mean, I think that there was a time where I saw some clips where Halle Berry won it. You know what I mean? And you're like, yes, <laughs> for Halle Berry. No, no. I've seen black people winning. I've seen, yeah, yeah. yeah. seen, seen every clip of the black But what about with Chris Rock hosting? I mean, I love Chris Rock. I think he's hilarious. And now I'm kind of interested to hear what kind of twist he's going to take. And I will say, if a movie's nominated for an Oscar, it might make me be like, oh, let me see, you know, what this is about. Most of the time, I think the most movies of them are boring. Be trash anyway. Yeah, most of them. <laughs> like, movies, yeah, after they when you garbage. go see them, they're horrible. Like, it's the like, Revenant is not dope to me. Like, yeah, I, I just want to. I just want to be able to relate to whatever I'm watching, and mm-hmm. like, just quite often, you know, the Oscars just don't reflect that for me. And like, you know what? I got to be real. Maybe I don't know if it's if I'm compromising or what, but I just I never wanted to be in a fraternity. Right. You know what I mean? And as far Envy as did. Envy actually pledged after he got out of college. I did, after? I did really? not pledge <laughs> after I got out of college. Okay, a liar. Envy. Okay. <laughs> He's a liar. So what know? happened, Envy? Tell us what happened. I, I didn't pledge after. So you were in college? I, t- I tried to pledge while I was in college. And what happened? My grades weren't suitable. That's not oh, what Oh, his grades weren't suitable. So you've never been in a fraternity. Yeah, I never, I never, I just, you know, man, I just never really needed to belong to any other group other than a rap group. And that, <laughs> and, and even that time, even that that passed, you know what I mean? Don't but you yeah. think the problem starts in Hollywood, though? Like, it's the Oscars is only reflecting what's out there. Like, the sample size isn't large. Like, I, I, th- I saw something where it's only, like, four movies came out with black directors last year, made it to theatrical release. Yeah. Um, does it start with Hollywood? You know, man, real talk, my perspective is going to get me in trouble, but this is the United States of America, and... The United States of America was never really set up for the advantage of minorities. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I have this whole theory where it's crazy too. I feel like this indoctrination is so is so deep because news, movies, everything else that you watch that we we are like a vicarious nation. We spend all our time invested in television and living vicariously through things that we see on screens that we don't actually have. Uh, we don't actually have a, a, a healthy perspective of reality. Mm-hmm. How many of us 
in our real lives. I had a woman come up to me the other day and she was like, yo, what should I do? I've been seeing this guy. He's a little older than me. I did everything that Maya did. I did everything by the book. I don't get it. And you gave in to Maya, right? <laughs> when is this dude going to give in to me? What, what should I? And, you should have had Tijuana Jackson answer her. You are right. I looked at her and she was like, what should I do? I was like, you should stop watching TV. What did I just tell y'all this morning? I tell them that all the time. Yeah, did, People believe everything they it, see on TV and social media. Exactly. And it's like, so, f exactly. And so as a result, I believe that that's why immigrants have a 67% higher chance of succeeding in the United States than we do because their orientation is different. They actually come here, right, you know, dealing with life and adversity in a way in which we don't. Mm -hmm. Our orientation is we're looking at TV and being like, well, he got successful like that. No, no. He didn't. That's TV. Right. Right. There's a real. narrative in your news. Mm -hmm. There's a narrative in your in, in your publication. There's a there's a formula to those narratives as well. You know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, so where where the problem starts? I don't know if there ever was a problem. I mean, I just don't really think that was like for us. I don't look at the Ku Klux Klan and be like, damn, when they gonna start recruiting? <laughs> God damn, man. I've been living in Texas all these years. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I never. The Oscars is the same thing. Man. I, I never really. Why would we want to be in that club anyway? You I know what I mean? About the Oscars, the yeah. Grammys. Like, yeah, I'd rather that. go where I'm celebrated, not tolerated. Yeah. And then when they do stuff like the NAACP awards and the yeah. BET awards, we don't show up. We don't show up. It's true. But, I you know, show up. But I tell you, you what. Just go to the party, G. But I tell you what. So I'm there. In 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 a weird way, it's it's look. We need to find ways to be celebrated for the things that we do, and I respect that. But I don't know, man. I feel as though us. We're used to being the minority in the environments that we are put in, mm -hmm. right? And so by nature, we're more culturally diversified. It's mm -hmm. very difficult for you to be a black man in America or Latino in America and not engage, you know, other nationalities, other races. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can be, a, you know, you can be what was once considered the minority, a, you know, a white a ca Caucasian, and you could live in a world where you never saw any people of color, right? So being that my life is actually that much more diversified, why wouldn't my work, why wouldn't my projects, why wouldn't, you know, the award shows that I put together reflect that? That makes a lot why, of sense. Yeah, why would I make it so specific to one race? That's not my reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? E everybody in this room has f***ed outside of their race. Every single one of y'all. Look me, look me, tell me you haven't. That's I what I thought. I'm Romney. Yeah. I love pink. Okay. I don't care about the color of the mm -hmm. individual. Thank you. I, I've never I, had sex with a white guy. Thank you. I've never had sex with a white guy. Thank you. No, no, but you've f***ed outside of your race. Am Everything's I right? outside of my race, pretty okay. much. Okay. But she's half Chinese and black, though. Okay. So, so it's, yeah, it's... I mean... If she had sex with a Spanish guy, it's outside of her race. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you're right. I guess you are. It's, I don't really have a choice. Hey, yeah. Romney, why are you looking at her like that? Because <laughs> I'm like... I, I never. A little bony in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking at his face like that? Like, hey, listen, wait, 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 wait. Romney is my boy. He's from Brooklyn, just Thank like me. You. Thank you. So you, you know. Hit, you hit Romney? You hit? No, no, man. I just, uh, I don't know. I just really attracted to this woman's spirit. But I, I, I never ever been disrespectful like that. No, like, you never. Married? You married? No. Huh? No. He's divorced. Uh, oh, okay. I'm divorced. Was your, I was married once. Was, I was your wife a, a stunt double for Jessica Alba? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to say. So you had a white wife? Mm, no. Spanish, Latino? No. <laughs> no. And it would be Latina no. for a female, just oh, saying you're no. not Latina. She was not Latina. But that's all good. <laughs> you kind of look like an Oscar a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like his name is Oscar. Talking about the actual award. What are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> but you've actually had very diverse roles, period. Yeah, yeah exactly. That was one. That's, you know, I kind of, I, I try to live the example and like, you know, just because a role was written for, written for Latino, or if it was written for a Caucasian, that don't mean that I don't go out for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And honestly, if it's written specifically specifically for a black person, I have to ask why. Right. I'm like, why? Real well, you know what I'm yeah. Real. Now, what you got know? you out of music and into acting? Like, because you was a rapper at one time. It's like 30 movie. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you signed the Virgin Music. Like, you thought yeah. you were gonna be a big rapper. I really did. I had that little one hit, boy. You couldn't tell. Me. I, a hit. Didn't you have a Grammy or something? Hit. You I had, had a Grammy. One hit. I had what? <laughs> hit, the fine hit. The fine hit. The, okay, no, no. It oh, was no, hit. not hit like today, but hit like it was like I want to say that we was like either number one or number two on the hip hop charts back then. Y'all had a video. A they had a video. Now. It's called Victim of the Ghetto. I Victim swear to God. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, the yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. I remember you, the hook. You, you can see it in Billboard. It'll say number one or number two. I don't remember, but you can you you'll see it in Billboard. It was. What's the name of the group? Because if I put in College Boys, black people are gonna come up. The name of the group was called College with a Z. College but the boys, boys. <laughs> College boys. was not spelled properly. Yeah, you know, you're right. I know that didn't make no sense. Anyway, let me, he's like, please, yo, no more of this. What's the Wi-Fi in here so I can stream and tell people I'm in hot water? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Victim of the Ghetto off their album Radio Fusion Radio went to number yeah. two on the rap chart. Get See, out! There Did you it go. Really? Yeah, that's oh. what it says. See, he's right. 
That's, I feel I, like y'all had two songs though. We did. We had this other song called Hollywood Paradox that was that seemed to get more coverage than the first I, one. <laughs> <laughs> did you do a lot of touring off this song? We did. I told everybody Naughty by Nature, <laughs> Tribe Called Quest. Yep. See, we, we, we did. You want to laugh? Nikki D back in the it was, day. It was too number short. sixty-eight on the Billboard chart and number one on the Hot Rap Singles. Let oh really? No, no. Yes, 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 yes. I was excited when I first <laughs> met <laughs> Romney. No no, 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 no. I didn't know that. I didn't not know just because of forty-year-old virgin. Not just because of. Hammer, no. but because of the college boys, that was really really exciting. That was the college yeah. boys. That's what, that's no, yeah. like, yo, <laughs> our show was hot though. They were positive brothers. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? At what point did you decide to get your life together? <laughs> <laughs> and leave, this, leave this nonsense yo. alone. <laughs> that's this funny. was 91. So at what yeah. age did you say, you know what? I can't be riding around with the low riders in the video. Yeah. I mean, you know, but you know, even looking at that, right? It's like. Oh! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> creep through the hood. <laughs> you know a rap gonna start off good when it's creep through the hood in the first few bars. Yeah, buddy. You had the little sideburns going. Yeah, in. yeah. I, I felt like I bought sideburns back, but they gave LL credit for that. But I felt like we, I bought it back. <laughs> now, also, Paul Abdul, you they thought you were the, the cat. Yeah, they Paul thought Abdul. I was. Why yeah. did they think you were the cat? Who's the cat, cat? Opposite the track. We yeah. talked about that last time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know why they thought I was the cat, but oh. I guess no. I'm playing. Um, because <laughs> I, I wrote all that stuff. You know, the cat had an album and a whole deal, and I wrote all that stuff for Paula and all that. So, you know. so what got you into you acting? You like a fake MC8. Yeah, fake MC8 right there, huh? Yes. You know what? You, like... you know, hey, I think... <laughs> I, you sound I think like MC8 was a huge influence on your rap style. <laughs> no, because I honestly think that, and I might be wrong, but I think that we dropped before 8. So you think he was yeah, really trying to? Yeah, I, 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 no, no, he did. <laughs> he no, MCA did mention victim of the ghetto in one of his songs. I mm -hmm. remember him saying something like, "Yeah, like I guess I'm going to be another victim of the ghetto or something like that." You know? Did you get a lot of back in those days? Um, no, I had a girl, man. I had a girl, and so I was like, you know, <laughs> you was I, a faithful rapper in '91. I know, yo, I would do tours with like, remember that group Second to None? Second to None. Nah. T DJ Quick. Yeah, I remember yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah. quick. I would, we would do tours together, and there would always be some promoter to be like, "Yo, we're the gay dudes." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so what's the promoter trying to get some hair? I don't know. You know, we're only in Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it was only gonna be like, Where's the gay dude? Why they thought you was gay? I don't know, man, because I didn't mess around. You know, they would bring girls to my bus and be like, oh, "Yo, okay. they'd be like, Yo, Ron, these girls want to meet you," and then they just stand there and watch me, and then they'd be like. I told you he gay. I told yeah. you. Get my hundred. Not doing nothing. Because I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't want to smile on my girl. My girl was, you know, I had a good girl. I had a good, you know, whatever. Do you regret not taking advantage of all that poom poom? You could have got as a rapper. Man, let me tell you something. Uh, the thing is, is that I never, you know, I, I've always had the gift of gab, so I've never had a problem getting ass. Yeah. So it wasn't like when I became famous that all of a sudden, you know, when you get, that's the thing, that's the thing. When you, when you actually get ass, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you get to a point to where, Quality is more important than quantity. True indeed. And so I've never really had a problem getting girls. I've, I've been a nerd and all this stuff, but I've always been able to talk my way into some ass. Right. So as a rapper, I got to be real. We'd be on the road, and a lot of what I was seeing wasn't really that attractive to me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And, you know, and, and I kind of felt like the woman that I was with was better than all of them combined. That's mm -hmm. how I felt. Right. You know what I mean? I'm asking one more question about this rap thing because I Go want ahead. you to forget about this part of your life. But, uh, <laughs> why college boys? Um... Really, it was a dem democratic vote. Our group was called Concrete Evidence. We started out as RMG. Oh, that was no, our last names. And then the group evidence. was Concrete. We called us a Concrete Evidence. And then we had a vote where we had a manager who was much more into the commercial aspects of, 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 yeah. of music. And he was like, you know, they came up with the name College Boys because we had been doing the college circuit so much. And I was like... They didn't believe in y'all. We got voted on. They didn't. They didn't. <laughs> That's the name of a group that you know is not gonna have a long run. You right, dude. You know what? Real, real talk. <laughs> I look at myself back then and I go, damn. The only thing that I regret about that time was how inauthentic I actually was. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's true. Creep it's like through the hook. <laughs> you know? No, but that was authentic. Right. You know? Because I wasn't talking about being hard. Not at all. I was actually talking, talking about people about, who are victims in the ghetto, exactly. not I, going anywhere. I'm talking about changing your perspective in the way in mm -hmm. which you live, which is the same. It's Mm -hmm. I'm extremely that's what I go to Detroit and all these places talking about is the exact same fucking thing now I just have a more refined way of saying it right, you know you. yeah but that never changed now let's move on let's talk about this um, I believe I remember Kevin Hart was pitching a show yeah and you were supposed to be playing his yeah. alter ego or something what uh, happened with that what happened with it? so we did this show for ABC um, it was Kevin's joint and um they asked me to come and do it now I'm extremely resistant to network television and I had been for quite a while why because, you know, 
I guess the best way to, to, to say it is quite often because of the fact that network has to serve as such a huge demographic, they have to be extremely careful about who they offend with their entertainment. Mm-hmm. Mm. And so you can't say this because you could turn off the Christians. You can't say this because you could turn off the Jews. You can't say this because, you, you know, you might the Muslims might be offended. You, can, you know, there's just so many things that you can't. So you end up getting hired for being creative, but you don't get asked to make creative choices. You get asked to make political choices. And for me, eight months of doing that is a sure shot way to alcoholism. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. I'm going to be miserable. I'm not going to be happy. I need a creative outlet. Right. And um, that's why that's why Mad Dogs was so appealing. And to you me. got to be in Puerto Rico. Got to be. Oh. So you basically live there now. I do. I live in Puerto Rico now. Mm. Yep. Because I've been looking for a place for like the last four or five years to live in the Caribbean, especially with everything that was going on here. And I just felt like when I got to Puerto Rico, it was the perfect marriage of what I'm used to as an American, but also what I'm used to as being of Caribbean descent. What do you mm-hmm. mean, what was going on here? Like what, well, just what brutality and stuff just, like that? Just the, the police brutality. You the, can't leave us, Romney. No, it's not leaving. I actually feel like I'm of better service when I'm in a place where my, it affects me when I, I'm being real, it affects me seriously when I see the injustice, but not just the injustice, when I have to engage the ignorance around it. You gotcha. know what I mean? So, and, and, and I'm being real, ignorance of all races, surrounding it whether it's you know some Caucasian dude that's in complete denial of the fact that there is definitely a bias that the judicial system has despite the statistics that reflect that or or if it's just a if just a brother who's got you know a counterproductive way of addressing the situation either way it's you're just perpetuating the situation and it it affects me and so I noticed when we were filming in Puerto Rico I was way less distracted by that Mm -hmm. and actually in a much more productive mind state you know what I'm saying and so, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to bore y'all with it, but no, it's not just, you know, no, it's not just, I agree with what you're saying, though, because, you know, sometimes white people just be really clueless, and it's frustrating yeah. that they're so clueless. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, it, it, and I mean, it, it's, it's again, it's the f- media in the way that, and not to knock revolt, not to knock you guys, but it's like the way in which things are depicted, it, anything that's profit-based is never going to really be, you know, it's never really going to be beneficial to your mind and to your soul. So, like... You got to make money here. And sensationalism makes money, you mm-hmm. know? The news is not the news. You know why the news is not the news? Because in order to really put things into context, you got to know the history. Mm-hmm. But we don't have an attention span long enough to listen to no f-ing history. Right. Nope. Our attention pa- spans are even shorter now thanks to yeah. Snapchat and Twitter right. and Instagram. Huh? What you say? What you say? Quick, huh? quick, yeah. quick. And, huh? and, and we live People in this information age. Nobody does research. You can literally just put a headline on social media and everybody will run with but it. But nobody's looking for information. They're looking for affirmation. There's a big difference between that. You're Break looking down, for sh- my brother. That means you're looking for sh- that, that supports you, that, that validates your what narrative. you already, your, your, your already established narrative. Yeah. Information actually is just simply facts. You look, no one's looking for facts. No. So everybody's tuning into the network. Yep. That's why these clowns like Bill O'Reilly still exist. And, and that's the reason, if anybody thinks that Donald Trump is, I'm not going to give this, this is, I'm not giving this none of my time, but I'm just going to say, oh, if any, if, mean, any, if, if right. anybody thinks, if, if, yeah. <laughs> no, no, that, that's actually a Caribbean thing because of the British yeah. influence, but okay. yeah. Um, if anybody thinks that Donald Trump is getting elected, if you know, I'm just being real, you a fool, right? The truth is that Donald Trump is good for ratings, and that's why he's being presented. Remember how close the race was between Mitt Romney and Obama? Mm-hmm. And this motherfucker didn't lose by a landslide. He literally died. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rob, you can't curse, man. This I'm, goes on radio. Well, Charlamagne's been cursing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I'm just... Anyway, um, you know, for me... It, but it is scary to me that people really support Donald Trump. That get, It was shot... I mean... I guess sometimes we, we don't realize the kind of world that we live in until people publicly can come forward and be well, that like... that could be the media, too. Yeah, exactly. I believe, you know, I believe that he's not his support. I believe that's a manipulated narrative. I actually think... Y'all want to hear some crazy... Can I say some mm-hmm. real... Please. Yes. Do we have time? Yes. yes. Check this out. About 10 years ago, Corrections Corporation of America, CCA, right? The, one of the largest private prison industries in the world, a private uh, prison companies in the world called Corrections Corporation of America about 10 years ago, they went after Mexicans hardcore to the point to where they themselves were conducting or partaking in, in uh, like drug raids in schools in Arizona to where they started like building a prison and the whole deal. Their whole thing was pushing uh, Capitol Hill to pass these laws that said, listen, if you think that you see someone who could be a legal immigrant, you can call in mm-hmm. and we'll come, you know, and, and we'll come get them kind of thing. Really? And then when they got the illegal immigrants, they didn't d- deport them. They detained them. 
and use them in the prison for private labor. Wow. For personal, you know, for free labor. To get them to work. Exactly. And now when you're in prison, I'm not going to say who because then I'm going to get in trouble, but you're working for pretty much every company that won't hire you when you get out of prison, mm. right? And so I don't know why, but Donald Trump just seems like the friggin' front man for Corrections Corporation of America. It's a te- if a typical strategy. You dehumanize a group of people, mm-hmm. right? And then or you disenfranchise them. And then as a result of that, the public becomes extremely apathetic when the injustices occur towards that group of people. Mm. So if I paint you in the image of like how they did how they did blacks, you paint you in the image of being a monster. And then I see you getting this and getting beat up and getting slammed in a chair in, in your classroom mm-hmm. and getting shot by the cops. You know, you're a monster. You, you know, you got it. you deserve yeah, it. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people in this country that are naive enough to buy into that narrative and really take it face value. It's a vicarious nation. They're not living. They're actually living through their screens. Mm-hmm. They, they, there's no true. Like, that's the reason. That's the one. That's probably one of the main reasons that I moved uh, to Puerto Rico is because I needed to be in a place that kind of like was that complemented my, you know, my social aptitude. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I'm a very social, engaging kind of individual. I'm curious. I want to ask questions. I, you know, I like life. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't live through, you know, don't be wrong. I do my social media and shit like that, but I don't live through, like, these written narratives that, you know. You control your social media. You don't let social media control you. I, I hope so. I yeah. hope so. You know, and it's hard to be objective because, you know, I'm doing it. Of course, I want to think in the most optimistic light. But if you kicked it with me for a month, you'd be like, yo, he... He's controlled by social media. Now, yeah. I, I see your pose, and I, and I understand what you're saying, whether it was the, the two dogs, the black and white dogs in, in, in the earthly world, and some of the things that you do post, and I see yeah. that, and I do to get that from you. I, I get that you care. Thank you, man. Thank you, dude. Yeah, and, and, and it matters, man. And, you know, in fact, while I got this platform, I'm going to just go ahead and use it and just say this real quick. You know, uh, this, this concept of success that we've been taught in this country mm. is extremely detrimental to our lives to our futures, to our children, because we are taught that success is this, monetary gain, social status, and acquisition of things, Mm -hmm. right? Now, what's really funny about that trip is, about that is it's a trap. It's like all three of those things are synonymous with debt, Mm -hmm. right? Social status, I gotta get another degree, right? More student loans, right? You know, I I, I gotta get a better paying job. I I gotta buy now, it's all synonymous with death. You can acquire all three of those things. You can attain all three of those things and still never have a sense of fulfillment. Oh, indeed. How the fuck is that success? How are you successful if you don't feel fulfilled? And the problem is, is that that kind of derails you from what actually I believe success entails, which is a sense of purpose. Because ultimately, we are all here to serve. No one feels better. Nothing feels better than giving to your children Absolutely. and giving to your Absolutely. community. Absolutely. Am I lying? No, you're right. And you know what's interesting to me? That people will look at other people and say, well, I don't know what he's upset about or what is she upset about? She has everything. Exactly. She has money. She's famous. How dare she be depressed or how dare this person feel this way? And you're like, you just because you have monetary success, that doesn't mean that you are happy, fulfilled. Exactly. Yeah. Why do you need to wear the same shoes that every mother is wearing? Mm-hmm. No, no, stop, stop. Stop. Why do you need to wear the same sh- that everybody else is wearing? Because rappers are rapping about Balenciagas, Romney. That's what I'm trying to Come say. On. It's like, but that's part of the narrative. And so it's like, mm-hmm. so if you think about it, a third of the people listening to this program right now have been molested. Me. I right? got molested when okay. I was eight. He's the third eight. Eight. by my okay. cousin's ex-wife. Oh, really? Yeah. You lucky dude. What she I said. enjoyed it. Yeah. Oh my god! The only thing I didn't like was she had a jerry car. I didn't like the smell of her jerry car. Oh, oh yeah, you know what? But at the time, this is awkward. Yeah, I thought I was the man. Okay, okay, okay. You know what? I, I apologize for saying that he was lucky. I'm, I'm, I was terrible sense of humor. Very dark. Now, very well, dark. Sense of humor. You, actually, <laughs> you hit you it on right. the head. Right. You hit the nail uh, on the head. Now, and I know, I know a lot of people similar scenarios. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people, God bless you, because a lot of people don't talk about it. They see it as like it, may, it, it. It's like it taints their image. It taints their persona, and so a lot of that shit stays bottled up. I probably and wouldn't talk about it if it was a guy that did it. Exactly. If you would, exactly. So see? potentially there is a guy, mm. and, you, and you just don't no, talk about not it. A guy. I said I probably wouldn't talk about it if it was a guy that did it. But I can see why if you got molested at eight by another man, you keep that to yourself. Yeah, exactly. Keep it to yourself. Exactly. Because, but this is the thing: we don't talk about this, shit, right? A third of you listening to this, you know for a fact that it's true. Whether it was someone really close, someone you trusted. Right. So we got all Your these secrets that we keep. Butt. Yeah, exactly. That's what TJ says. He goes, <laughs> when I was eight years old, my uncle tried to put his finger in my ass <laughs> while I was asleep, but I caught him. <laughs> Took about seven hours of surgery to get my foot out of his f***ing larynx. <laughs> his voice up good. To this day when that talk, he sound like, um, 
He sound like um, what's the name of that big old buff with the raspy voice that won the uh the won the Grammy? The, the nigga with the afro, big strong nigga. The, you know, the who afro, used to work strong, out. Nigga. But the one that, you know with the Macy Gray sound like that. Now, <laughs> would you believe? <laughs> no, Damn, Macy. my goodness. No. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> no, but okay. Back on track is that we are told to mask and hide our pain because it makes us look weak. Right. But the reality is that the pain is your pathway to your purpose. Mm. If you become an expert at your pain. You become like the Terminator in the way that you can like assess the world and find people who've been through similar struggles. Right. And because you've done the work on you, you can help them. Mm. Nigga, that's why we here. We ain't here to stay in our little coops. We ain't here to be like the best dressed in the world. No, we are actually here to serve. And that's the problem is that we're such individuals because we let the media convince us that we should be afraid. Honestly speaking, the news has never once reflected anything that I've experienced in my life. Mm. Other than other than other than police brutality, mm -hmm. that's the one thing I will say. Growing up, cops just fucked with me from and my pops. Yep. You know. So, but you experienced police brutality, <sighs> dude. I mean, when I was six, cops was beating my pops up in the driveway at my house. You know what I mean? And then so think of what think of how I regarded police yeah. growing right. up. And then I was in Brooklyn and Queens. And then put the music on top of that with the NWA telling us f the police. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. And then I was like, oh, so man, I swear to God, I've had. Uh, me and my boy, me and my boy Nitro got pulled over one time in L.A. Man, I laid into this cop so hard that my boy Nitro got, we, we, he was afraid for his life. Mm. And I, and at the time, I just couldn't control the anger. And I was like that with cops until I started dating this girl. Her name is Jacqueline. She's like a Jamaican chick from England. And she was like, Rom, you're very anti-authority and it makes me nervous. And it was the first time I ever thought that I'm putting the people's lives and the people around me's lives in danger because of my attitude. That meant I was putting my brother's life mm -hmm. in danger. That meant I was putting my mother's life in, you know. And that was when I actually started behaving differently mm -hmm. because, you know, I didn't see it. Right. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, all I, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm all over the place, but because <laughs> so, I got so much to say. No, Thank great, you. Great information. But yeah, this narrative, whether you're watching the news, whether you're watching television, whether you're watching a movie, there's a formula. Joseph Campbell, he established that there are 15 beats to even the shortest joke. And that starts with an opening image, an ending image. But, you know, but there's also like, uh, you know, there are plots and the whole deal. And so we are conditioned. If you notice, a person will watch an amazing movie. But if that end part of that movie don't give them the payoff that they wanted, mm -hmm. that emotional oh, acceptance. Well, they'd say the whole movie was terrible. They do all kinds of um, screenings for people to, to see if the ending of the movie is okay. Because if not, they'll change the ending of the movie. Movie to me, to, to mm -hmm. me, to satisfy your endorphin rushes, right? right? Exactly. And so, so think about this shit, though. We are so good at that narrative that we can predict the movie before the movie's over. Mm -hmm. And we now that we're, it's so ingrained in us that that's how we interpret life. That's not life. And you're being manipulated by every thing that you watch, including news. And here I am talking about watch my show. But the reality <laughs> is, is that most of the mainstream stuff that you watch is written to that narrative. Right. And you now believe your life is supposed to be like that. And that's why your orientation, right, makes life difficult in the way that it does. Because life is going to be difficult. But you're taught to interpret adversity through a fucking television show. Mm. And then you got some other coming over here from another country, right? A Trinidadian dude, yeah, I, I young, I hungry, boy, I come to get, I come to get. And he's taking that same adversity and using it to his advantage. Right. You know? So. It's not just television, though, it's social media as well. Cause it, I, feel, I feel like people wake up in the morning and go to social media to find out what they should care about for the day. Ooh, that's a good point. Damn, that's good. Yeah, that, that, that gets on my nerves when I'm, I'm, I'm going to say. I mean, it's weird how selective we are about which act of terrorism we're going to care about, yeah. like, plast all over social mm -hmm. media. It just... You know, I don't know, man. Individuality, I really, and that's the other thing, art, man. You know, they strip you of your art by the time you're in the, what, third, fourth grade. So it's like, you know, without art, you don't really have individuality. So in some kind of creative outlet, you don't really have any of that individuality. You just become a assembly line citizen. Mm. You it's know? crazy. I mean, even from this interview, they're going to be like, yo, Romney hates black women. Oh, what? Really? Yeah. Where did you, Where get, did you that? get that from? I just said it. I just put it out there. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's good. What are you that's talking good. about? I was, like, how, about that? I was like, how you? <laughs> Yo. you? You can catch Mad Dog <laughs> on Amazon. It premieres January twenty second. January twenty second. January twenty second. Man. Um. And yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, ten episodes. She says yeah, all ten yeah. episodes will be on there, January twenty second. Exactly, man. I'm sorry I got all sidetracked, no, man. Great. I really came here to just talk about the damn show. <laughs> Nobody but, can't listen. You can't promote to people like that. 
You can't come here and talk about the show for 20 minutes because then people are like, I don't care about this show. No. But when you mask it amongst other things. Yeah. So like, no. I like this guy, okay. Romney. I'm going to go see what the show is about. Just, well, Check it out. End with the show. End with the show. We we, we gonna we gonna we gonna end with the show then. Okay, but yeah, man. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I swear. To, <laughs> listen, I swear to you, I'm not I'm not hyping it up. I, I, people go, why don't you do more? Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just being real. A lot of the roles that I get offered, I'm bullshit. What is it, like a bald head black man role? <laughs> they want me to play like a black dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> black no, no, it's true. Like I just get you know, ever since the 40 year old virgin, mm -hmm. I get offered to be that guy. All day, every day, and it's been ten years. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and or I'm being offered something that I consider incredibly stereotypical, or I'm being offered something that Drug doesn't. Dealer, basketball no. player. Not no stereotypical not role you received. Hammer. Um, no, that wasn't stereotypical. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. That, it wasn't. Hammer is that was a great yeah. one. <laughs> exactly. Um, the 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 most stereotypical role that offer that I've gotten is. You know, to be the because I, listen, I don't look like a drug dealer. Nobody can sell me as a drug dealer. But I think that for me, you know, everybody wants me to be like the. Even in my show, I had this problem. Like, you know, the black guy that made it out of the hood. I'm like, yo, I'm a hundred years old. If a is thirty and alive and healthy in America, he made it. Mm -hmm. If you black thirty alive in America, you have made it as far as I'm concerned. Because most of us, right, mm -hmm. we're getting derailed by the time we're fifteen. Murdered, shot, you know what I mean? We finding our way to incarceration. It's like, so I can't do that. That's not authentic, mm -hmm. real, real talk. You know, and there's nothing about my being that reflects that. So I just be like, you know, I, you know, or, or you know, everybody wants me to be Conrad from Weeds all over. I know. Again, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? And so anyway, um, this was an opportunity to just be a dude in some sh You know what I mean? And me and the writer got into a, a huge, and the director got into a huge thing because they had my character upholding this argument about, you know, if you know if you come from where I come from in Chicago and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yo, hold up, my character damn near 50. That's not, he got two successful daughters. I'm like, that's not the narrative. It ain't about him, it's about his children. Right. You know? So and basically that, you're saying you don't want to be black. Oh, sh dude, if that's he what you got from that. He doesn't want to be the stereotypical. <laughs> if that's what you got from Don't that. No. Hey, oh, 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 can I rap about something else real quick? Can we talk rap? about something? Are you going to literally I'm rap? A rap? I'm a rap. I'm a rap. But I'm a rap. But I want to rap. But I want to say, talk about something else real quick. Right. I grew up in this country as a West Indian American. I went to school in Trinidad and Tobago, and I went to school here. Mm -hmm. Right? I big enough Trinidad? No. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, I went to school, and ev I just didn't, wa I didn't watch the Cosbys. I didn't watch Different World. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't, you know, there's just a lot of things that were synonymous with being black in this country mm -hmm. that I just wasn't into. And as a result of that, I was never considered black enough. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong, I loved hip hop, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I wasn't a big R&B fan, but I loved the old school R&B, you, right. know, you know, but I wasn't into like the kind of croony Right? Mm -hmm. So that's why you hate black people. So people, exactly. So, that, that, that's, what, that's why I hate black people. He said I hate black people. And this is what, this is what, <laughs> and no, but it's the truth though. Like, you know, would be like, you ain't black. And that was one of the things that was really dope is that it made me realize when I went to Puerto Rico. I was at my boy's birthday party in Puerto Rico when it, they were doing bumba. I don't know if you know what that is, but like, they're these drummers and a woman or a man will dance and the drummers have to match that person's movement. And it hit me right then and there. I'm like, oh, these are some of the most African people I've been around in a minute. Like Puerto Ricans are African, yo. Like they are in touch with African roots and they're in touch with their Spaniard, you know, the Spaniard roots, they're in touch with, you know, the Taino Indians. They're in touch with their roots. And in that moment, it hit me, dog, black means African, period. There's no way you have to talk. There's no way you have to walk. There's no particular thing you have to listen to. Black means African. African. Don't let this corporate structure, this corporate world, you know, convince you that if you don't wear a certain thing and behave a certain way that you ain't black or black qualified. Man, that's... So you're saying Puerto Ricans are black people. Man, man, 75% of that island will tell you that they white, but Puerto Ricans are African. And I'm, I'm talking about when they dance, you see it. When they, you know, when they converse, you feel it. So you, you consider yourself Puerto Rican now? No, no I'm Puerto trying Rican. to dance. <laughs> Trinidad, yes, it's a, it's a Trinidad, then you go come here, Puerto Rican. I can't, eh, eh, you see, that's the thing, that's the thing. It's a binary narrative. It's a binary narrative that's killing me, you, you know. sound like Will everybody, Smith and concussion. No, no, everybody, <laughs> Tell the truth, tell the truth. No, it's a, it, here, it's a binary, it's a, it's a binary thinking. You have to be either or. Man complex. You understand me, Trinidadians? What I'm saying is, 
this binary this narrative. Jerk chicken now. I want some jerk chicken. Hey, right uh, FYI, uh, he don't eat none of that. Bullshit. You don't eat no. You don't eat jerk chicken. I, I just crush up it. Don't don't, don't study shit, boy. I oh. must. Fuck oh, shit, with my eye bullet, he don't eat no roti. He no. don't eat no gluten. You crazy. <laughs> but listen to what I'm saying though. Right. This binary. What you just said. You said. Oh, so you put a recon now. This is the thing. We on this either or. Shit. I'm sorry. I'm talking too much. No, I'm going to shut up. Go, go. We, we, no, no. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. No. We, we on this either or thing where the media gets you set up to where you go. The media gets you set up to where you go. You have to be one thing, the good guy mm. or the bad guy. No, human beings are more complex than that. We are comprised of more than that. But we always reduce it to, oh, there was a bombing. So mm. as a result of that, Muslims are killers. We always have to, they, it, we don't understand the gray. We don't understand humanity. We're letting the narrative tell us right. that, oh, so you're in Puerto Rico, you're a Puerto Rican now. Just mm -hmm. being real, right? That's what we're doing. We reduce it to that. Or if you don't do that, you ain't black. No, man, it's much more complex than that. And if I were really to call on their I'd be, you know, if I really would have called people on these are descendants of slave masters. And our grandparents got by white folks all the time and impregnated and everything, sodomized and the whole sh You know what I mean? So you don't have to justify why you love Puerto Ricans, around No, I'm not. That, that's and not that what Puerto I'm doing. Rican thing was a joke, by the way. No, I know it was, but I'm saying what there is a reality <laughs> to that narrative. There is a <laughs> reality Leave to that narrative. Me, man. Yo, goodness gracious, catch this show. Yo, man, watch my show. <laughs> watch my show. Watch my show. Okay. And, no, no. and Jewish people uh, and no. everybody watching. All the Africans. No, it's, no man. It's Rodney <laughs> Yeah, man. It's the Breakfast Club. Yes. I'm Good out. information, okay. though, Rodney. Yeah, great information. No, I, I always sorry. enjoy no. talking to Rodney. Don't leave. Oh, what are you oh, doing? You're always trying to escape. Oh, my You're God. She just got up. Now you trying to <laughs> the room. Woo. <laughs> <Relax. laughs> Yo, this is starting to remind me of that talk you had with Beyonce's pops. Where I was like, hey, that's had me on edge because I was waiting for Sean. You know, you gave him a lot of respect, but I was waiting. Boy, I was like... I was watching Charlemagne like. He called Charlemagne insecure. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I saw that. I watched it. I watched Charlemagne face too. I just had to sting him one good time. That's yeah, all. yeah, you took it easy. You took it because right. I, because I, because yeah, I, I, you know. grown man. You know what I mean? No, it's respect. It's respect. It's respect. All right, it's the Breakfast Club. It's Romney Malco. No, no, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Come back. One come more back. thing. All right. High hopes to the okay. with humble beginnings. Okay. No, I'm playing. Okay. Go, 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 some balls. Okay. All right. Okay. They say the good die young. That's why I live in sin. Oh. Sweet. Cause wanna beef, bitches, I'm your insulin. I won't stop till I'm swimming in the Benjamins and homies up in GP is sodomizing Zimmerman. Ooh. This is the predicament n and black women in. Birth them, then we christen them, then we boss bitching them. Okay. Go to prison, come back, put the syphilis in them, and you ain't even know it. Cause it ain't in your curriculum. Oh. See how my flow go deep like Shark Week, huh? I keep it live, Eddie King, I'm a heartbeat. Kit Kat, every mother f bar sweet. I want the thigh cause I love to get that dark meat. <laughs> they going out for the limelight. I'm going in like two fingers on prom night. Okay. I'm in the booth for these doing time like life is a chess game. But this the wrong night. Got to check a He don't get me. I lead my people to the water while they asking me for Henny. I stay over <laughs> his head like a handful of confetti. I stay over <laughs> his head like a Kardashian's legs and they ain't ready for me. Woo. I'm hip hop's <laughs> wine Kenobi. I say match the money and f matrimony. No hoe can hold me. No can outflow me and they wordplay doughy like Chloe Odom the homie. I got these motherfuckers tripping off the fact that this acting rap like a thug with his gat. Brat! And it's Who the one with cousins in the trap? And I ain't trying to judge them. I just love them where they at. They call me Hollywood but they love a back. Why they the only motherfuckers saying something in they rap when the rest of y'all self-proclaim but ain't made how the fuck you running the game from a slave shit? You ain't got that gift of gab that's D-Wage Half these entertainers want the game in their anus. Oh, oh. Oh, you, oh, you thought that was a joke? <laughs> Ain't heard a more prolific <laughs> since Malcolm X spoke. So let me get oh in now. The he here now. Oh, f you dissed oh! the game, bro. I wasn't dissing the game. You just said that the they game went... be in people's anus. No, no, no. I was saying, game. I didn't say that. I said the game. I said the game. He showed his penis on the internet. And he got the whole f***ing industry crunk. That's what I said. Got you, okay. Don't kill me. Don't. <laughs> Don't kill me. Oh, yo, can I ask a question really quick? Yeah. yeah. What happened to, um, what happened to, uh... <laughs> All right, time to go. No, no. Right, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 he what? had a, what happened to, to the dude, the dude that he was Ooh. beefing with? Ooh, Ooh the game? Stitches? Stitches. Stitches. They Man, signed him. You the first black person to ever ask anybody about stitches. Yeah, His manager signed him. Signed him. Nobody. And Don't he put out a video stitches. where he was walking women like dogs. What? What happened? Um, he put out a video where he was walking women on leashes Romney. like dogs. Romney. Yeah. 
It's a lot of people you could be talking about in hip hop. Stitches is not one. No, the reason I asked is because I saw like some you false been in, narratives. You've been in Puerto Rico too long. Okay. Romney? I know. I just saw. Where are you going? Narratives. Why are you just walking away? <laughs> I thought it was over. Can we close it out? <laughs> I thought we closed it out. I closed it out. Don't let the show come on again one more time. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The Breakfast Club. Every weekday morning. Tune in.